Today I'm taking a look at this, which is the Tiny TV 2. It's a $60 one inch television set. Well, it's not actually a television set, it's kind of TV-like. I saw it going around online, so I knew I had to try it out myself. So let's see if it works in today's video, starting with the unboxing. Let's take a look at the Tiny TV 2. I paid $59.95 for this. It currently has a 4.5 star rating, but only 82 ratings. It's also an Amazon's choice. Well, that is, that is very small. Look at the size of this thing. And it even has a little tiny remote here too. Look at that. Now the claim says that it's a working 1.14 inch screen. You can load up to 10 hours of your own video via USB and their conversion tool. I don't see a USB cable, so I guess you gotta supply your own, but there are some, uh, uh, well, a QR code to instructions. They say it includes working rotary knobs right here. It even includes a tiny remote control right there. There's some microscopic buttons on there, but I don't think they all actually work. It has a built-in rechargeable battery, which is USB-C. Now reviews are surprisingly positive for this one. Most people say the picture is excellent, especially for the size, with only a few complaints about the audio quality. So I'm gonna have to charge this up, find some instructions, and then get started. All right, I've charged it up. I'm ready to try it out for the first time. Here we go. Turning it on is, here's the power button right here. This knob controls the volume. This knob controls the channel. And we have the remote control. This, this side is channel up and down. This side is volume up and down. And there's a power button up here. So let's turn it on right now. Here we go. Oh, we have a nice little fireplace. Let's see if we can get some volume here. Kind of hear something. It's pretty quiet. Let's try another channel here. I can turn the channel using this knob. Oh, it, it, when you change a the channel, there's a little bit of static in between channels just to mimic an old school TV. That's kind of a cool touch. Very cool. I like the static. The static kind of makes a difference there. Use remote here. Static. So that's, that's pretty much it. Now I can do the volume with this button. This is the credits here, it looks like. With the preliminaries out of the way, it looks great with its own videos, but how about my videos? That's what I wanted to try next. So I downloaded their conversion software, which uh, went without a hitch, but until I tried to install it, it didn't work on my desktop computer at all. Double clicked on the file, nothing happened whatsoever. So I tried it on my laptop. There I got a warning that it might be malicious, but I said run it anyways and it worked fine. When you plug the TV into your computer via USB cable, it converts into USB storage mode, and then it just shows up on your computer like a regular drive. You can copy files right on there. There's also a small text file for some a few settings you can change. Not a lot, but I guess a few customization options. If you'd like, you can also delete the preloaded videos off of there. The software is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is basically just select the file and hit convert. And it's a pretty quick process, although I wish you could batch select, but you can't do that. You have to do one at a time. But even though the conversion process was quick, the transfer, not so much. From what I gathered from their website, the card in here is an eight gigabyte card, which you can remove by the way. They say you have to use tweezers to get out of there. It must be a slow card though, because it took over 12 minutes to transfer only 589 megabytes. That's less than one megabyte per second. By the way, the resolution of the files it converts is 210 by 135 and they're AVI files. With all the preliminaries out of the way, let's see how it looks. Here we go, turning the unit on itself. All right, this is a file that I put on there. This is a scene from the Boulder City uh, Spring Jamboree. Let's change channels here. This is a video of Brandon and Bailey playing together. Now this is one of theirs. That's one of theirs. One of theirs. One of theirs. The order seems like, I, I'm not really sure what the order is. I start off with one of my, oh, there's mine. There's one of mine, that's one of my reviews. What's weird though is it just kind of started in the middle of the video. This is not the beginning of the video. And obviously there's no way to rewind it or fast forward. You just kind of watch it from wherever it decides to choose. It seemed to almost pick a random spot. That's kind of odd. Some of us older demographics might need some reading glasses for this. Let me look at the picture here. The picture looks pretty good. It's weird seeing myself on a one inch screen. That's kind of interesting. The, the volume's a little quiet, let me see. The, uh, the audio isn't that great. Even though the picture looks pretty good for a size, the audio really isn't very good. It's a bit tinny. I feel like I had to turn it up loud enough to hear, it kind of vibrates the entire unit. It has like a plasticky sound to it. Oh, it works, it works. It actually works. 
Here's some home movies I shot in Hawaii in 1986 after I graduated from high school. Hopefully my friends don't mind me showing this. <laughs> Maybe they don't watch these videos. What I wanted to do was I wanted to use something from my phone, something I had posted on YouTube, and something I had converted from a VHS. So all those formats seem to work pretty well. So the format of it doesn't seem like that's a problem. It can convert pretty much anything. So that seems pretty good. It, it is a trip watching my, my old home movies on a one inch screen. But the one in the screen does look pretty good. I'm going to keep playing around with this a little bit, but overall the experience has been pretty good. I'm kind of disappointed that the software didn't run uh, off my, on my desktop computer. I had to use my laptop. I really wish they had batch conversion. And they really need kind of a fast forward and a rewind because th this video is, is a half an hour long and I, I just, just kind of starts playing in the middle of it. What if I wanted to watch them again? I can't, but I'll keep playing around with it and I'll let you know if anything changes. I want to try a couple other things on this. I took it outside to see how it looks out there. In the shade, it doesn't look too bad. In the direct sunlight, it doesn't look so great. I'm not sure why you want to do that, but in case you're wondering, there's your answer. As far as the battery goes, they say it lasts two hours. I did run it with a stopwatch and it lasted a little over two hours. So that claim I would say is accurate. But in the end, I would say it's kind of strange, kind of cool. I'm not sure if it has any practical use, but I'm glad I tried it out. If you've tried the tiny TV or something like it, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.